Testing, one, two, three, testing.
We have begun live streaming, please. Okay, thank you. Members, good evening. And I trust before we commence tonight's meeting that we could just take a few moments to pay our condolences to the family, friends and communities in Armagh, Market Hill, Tynan and Portadown. To the broken-hearted families of Marina Crilly, Emma Mallon, Bill Mitchell and Keith Morrison, we pass on to you our sincere sympathies and that the prayer that the Lord will draw near to you as you come to terms with us unimaginable grief. Many of us in the chamber tonight have young people the same age of those involved in this horrific accident, as do I. And as it apparent, it is a call we never want to receive to hear our child has been killed in such a way. So I trust we will continue to remember each of their family and friends in the coming days. And members, we cannot forget about another man, Gary McLaughlin, who also lost his life in a road traffic collision on the Fork Hill Road on Saturday night. Our sincere condolences to also to his family and friends. Finally, members, can I also ask that you pray for our PSNI, the Fire and Rescue Ambulance and Hospital staff, who have had to deal with this horrific tragedy. I honestly don't know how they cope with what they've seen and how they've dealt with it. And there they will be back on duty again to help everyone in our community. Members, we need to remember each and every one of these people tonight in our prayers. And I have a number of councillors wanting to speak on this. Alderman Wilson. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And I would just like to add my um, condolences, my thoughts and my prayers and my sympathies just to the families of the bereaved. The accident happened just on the edge of uh, the boundary there between the Armagh and Cusher DEAs. And it was just such a shocking thing to learn of um, over the weekend. And you know, as my boss, William Irwin, says, he tragically lost a child and he often recounts that and he always says, nothing in the world prepares you for the loss of that. You know, what that signifies and just the ongoing impacts of it across birthdays and all the special celebrations that go on in families throughout the year. So we just really do need to pause and really remember them in our prayers to, and as a community, just do all we can to sustain them. Just it's so horrific for, you know, you know, people, four people coming home from a, from a night out. They've been full of joy and, and fun and then for it all to end in such a horrific fashion. Words just don't do it justice. Thank you. Members, if you can bear with me, so many lights came on at the one time there, so I'm going to try to take these in the order that I think. Councillor Hockey. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, just on behalf of myself and Sinn Féin, I just want to um, send our condolences to the families of Keith, Emma, Philip and Marina. Um, four young people from this area tragically killed on our roads in the early hours of Sunday morning. Um, the whole community has been deeply shocked and saddened by the events and uh, we just want to send our deepest sympathy and condolences to everyone affected by the tragedy. Um, our entire communities are shocked and saddened, but as they always do, I'm sure we'll rally around to support the families in what will be dark days ahead and weeks and months. But our communities are fantastic at supporting families in those the worst of times. But as, as you did also, I want to pay tribute to the emergency services and everyone who helped out on the scene and may they all rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hockey. Councillor Armstrong. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I'm not much older than, than the group of the people that passed away there, and I could just think of how my mother would react um, if she got that knock on the door in the early hours of Sunday morning, and it just breaks my heart. Um, Sometimes words are not enough to describe the events that happened the weekend. Um, in the space of six hours from Saturday night and Sunday morning, Five people lost their lives in County Armagh. Um, four on the outskirts of the city itself, on the Ballinholme Moor Road, and then one in Yerry. Marina Crilly, Emma Mallon, Keith Morrison, Phil Mitchell, all lost their lives in Armagh, and Gary McLaughlin in Yerry. My sympathies, my thoughts, and my prayers go out to all the families and the circle of friends who are grieving at this difficult time. The whole community is in shock, and the outpouring of love from them may not bring these young people back, 
but it may bring some comfort to the family in these coming days. I'd also like to pass on my thanks to the first responders, the PSNA, the Northern Ireland Fire Service, the Ambulance Service, and also the civilians who were also first on site, who tried their best to help and did everything they could, but unfortunately they weren't able to help all four victims, well known. So I'd just like to pass on our record and, and the party's record, the UP, um, our condolences. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Armstrong. Councillor O'Hanlon. Thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. I wish to add my deepest sympathies uh, and condolences, thoughts and prayers to the families of Emma, Marie McKeith and Phil. Four young lives cut short and no words we or anyone else can say will comfort their families at this time of unimaginable grief. As news broke in our community yesterday morning of the tragedy, the whole community were stunned and a dark cloud descended over the area as it started to sink in. Devastation and heartbreak, it's just awful, was how people were describing it. And heartbroken friends took to, to social media to leave their tributes. In Middleton and Tynan, Bala McNabb, Armagh and Market Hill, the lives of families and loved ones have been changed forever. For their parents, this is not how it should be. Nothing prepares you for the loss of a son or daughter, no matter what the age or their circumstances. For their brothers and sisters and friends, in the months ahead, it will be the first birthday, the first holiday, or the first Christmas without them. The milestones in life, the weddings, the family ga gatherings that should have been, and that we all look forward to. Emma, Marina, Keith and Phil leave voids in life, in homes and in people's hearts that can never be filled. In Marina, she leaves a little three-year-old son, Killian. His nanny or granny, Pat, is a member of our community development team in council. My heart breaks for that little man and his entire family circle. As a daddy of a soon-to-be three-year-old boy, I can tell you no matter how hard you try, he's always mummy's boy. No matter how hard daddy tries to tell him otherwise, the trips, the falls, the greatest knees, and just, and just when he needs a cuddle, it's mummy who does those best. This is not the, the first time our community has been plunged into grief like this. In November, the community in Madden lost Patrick and Kira Grimley and Kira McIlvanna in just as equally tragic circumstances. And I think of them and their families tonight as well. Lord Mayor, can I use the opportunity tonight to address the young people in our community? They have lost wonderful friends and soulmates. And whilst these dark and difficult these are dark and difficult days, there will be light, there'll be hope and laughter again. But if you're struggling to cope with and understand the tragic loss, please reach out, ask for help and seek support. Speak to someone. It is there, help is there, and we are here for you. You don't have to deal with this on your own. And ask, Lord Mayor, I'd ask that we engage with the, our partners in health, the community and sporting sectors to ensure that we can facilitate whatever help we can do as a local authority in the months ahead. And we keep all the families in Armagh, Middletown, Tynan, Market Hill, Ballon McNabb and Madden in our thoughts and prayers this evening. Thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor O'Hanlon, and totally concur with everything that you have said there. Alderman Kennedy. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd like to be associated. I'd like to be associated with the comments on behalf of the UUP grouping. Uh, I knew Keith personally, managing eighty solid our kitchen table. Uh, the Crilly family lives less than a mile from me. The Mitchell family is about two miles from me. I didn't know the young girl, Emma, but I I, I knew two very well, and 
the, the third family I, I went to school with his father and the, the, the man in Uri as well would pass on sincere sympathy and our hearts and prayers are with um, all the people involved in the tragedy over the weekend. Thank you, Alderman Kennedy. <clears throat> Councillor Radcliffe. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I think as we all sit here tonight, it's extremely hard to gather words for what to say in the circumstances. Um, whenever you think of these young people, Emma, Marina, Keith, and Phil, in split minutes, split lock of seconds, just wiped off the face of the earth. It's just absolutely tragic. It really, really is. And my heart goes out to their parents. I cannot imagine what they were going through whenever the police came to their doors at the early hours of the morning. It's just unthinkable so it is and I would like to pass on my deepest sympathy and condolences and prayers thank you Rodmer Thank you Councillor Radcliffe Councillor Lavo Thank you Lord Mayor I agree with all that's been said in the chamber um, it's devastating news and to have my own group and pass on our condolences to the families, to the circles as well, a circle of friends, to the first responders and all who are impacted, not only over this past weekend, but over the coming months and years. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Members, thank you for, for that. And um, it's just nice to be able to um, let the families know that we're thinking of them tonight as, as we commence this meeting. Members, as Lord Mayor, you know, you have those tragedies, but then you move on to some wonderful, and, and it would be omiss for us not to remember the celebration event that took place at the South Lake Leisure Centre on and, and the Craig Avon Ski and Sports Centre before this tragic news came through. Um, if anyone was about either of those facilities, and I know member, many of the members turned up for that, um, the smiles on the faces of those young people would have done your heart good at the Special Olympics. As Lord Mayor, it was an absolute honour for me to participate in the opening ceremony, as did a number of, of, of councillors uh, come along to that. Um, anyone that was there will remember that the atmosphere was incredible and the room was buzzing, absolutely buzzing with excitement. Um, I had also called in to, on the Saturday, into the leisure centre and into the ski, um, uh, the Craigavon ski slopes. But the reason I wanted to raise this tonight was um, no matter who I spoke to, no matter who it was, and there was many, many people, um, they really wanted to thank our, our council for such a magnificent facility that we had um, offered for to hold the, the, the uh, Special Olympics, but to our staff, both at the Leisure Centre and the Craig Avon Ski and Sports. Um, and I want to ensure that every single member of staff is notified by their senior manager of our appreciation because they went over and above beyond anything that was asked of them. Um, and I just want them to know how much I personally appreciated that. And I know that many others um, that were there that over the weekend appreciated that too. And I know, Councillor Nelson, you were looking to to speak on this too. Thank you, Lord Mayor, and I just hope my voice holds up for this. Um, but I did think it was very important that we took an opportunity this evening to put on record our thanks to staff who worked tirelessly, not just at the weekend, but in the run-up and a point like this takes a lot of planning. And I was looking back actually and this was actually meant to come to our borough in 2021, and COVID hit, and so staff had been involved, and they'd disappointed when that happened. So actually, on behalf of our party, we attended the event on Friday, and many of us were attending events in the South Lake Centre at the ski slopes on Saturday and Sunday, and it was just so heartwarming that it couldn't have happened without our staff, uh, and there's no doubt that they went over the above anything that we would usually ask. So just to place on record our thanks, our appreciation, and just so that they do get that from their senior managers. Um, it was a real delight to be there and just to see our prayer show, show off in the way that it was. So uh, we would also want to say an echo your words as well. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Councillor Flaherty. 
Wait, I... Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Mayor, uh, and thanks for raising this because I had wondered how I was going to get it get it in somewhere uh, about the fabulous event because it truly was it truly was joyous um, on for on Friday night and as you point out at the ski slopes on Saturday it was something else. A number of myself and a number of colleagues went along on Saturday just to say uh, you couldn't explain it if you weren't there. Uh, but it really took an army of volunteers from across the borough um, and fam lots of families and, and our own staff. So I'm glad to hear that, that hear that. And just when, I've, when you've let me in, sorry, if, you, if I may, can I also thank the Deputy Lord Mayor? Uh, some, something on the same theme, because uh, she hosted a, a very, very special night for Down Syndrome Awareness on Thursday. And again, it was the, the, Down, the Downs and Pride Choir. I have to give them a wee drop. They were just absolutely fantastic. Um, and we very much appreciated your hospitality, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, so thanks very much. And as they said on Friday let, night, let me win. But if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. Thank you, Lord Mayor. <clears throat> <clears throat> Thank you, Councillor Flaherty. Yes, I agree. I thought that was a fantastic motto that they had at the start. So, members, I thank you for um, just allowing us to, to um, speak on both of those tonight. So, agenda item number one, apologies. I have received an apology for Alderman Paul Barry. Uh, Councillor Hockeyan, you have additional? Yeah, um, Councillor Paul Duffy. Thank you. Don't see any other nights on, members, so... Agenda item two, <clears throat> can I have a proposer and a seconder for the minutes of the council meeting for February? Now, members, you're, you're all in-house here now. Don't be shy to propose. Thank you, Councillor Kevin Savage and Councillor O'Kane. Appreciate that. Um, declarations of interest members, and um, we can take those as the meeting progresses. Agenda item four, environmental services. Um, Councillor Hockey, are you content to propose? Yep, hold on, call you in. Yes, Lord Mayor. Oh, sorry. Alderman Barry has an apology. Is there someone else could second those minutes for me? Thank you, Councillor Radcliffe. Um, agenda item, oh, sorry, members, are, are we all agreed? Any items arising? All good, okay. Agenda item 4.2, minutes of the planning. Uh, Alderman Barr, content to propose. Thank you. Alderman Kennedy, happy to second. Um, members, any queries? All agreed? Don't see any lights on. Thank you. Agenda item 4.3, Councillor Ian Wilson, propose. Thank you. Councillor O'Kane, happy to second. Members, are we all agreed? Any members want to raise anything? All content. Thank you. Agenda item 4.4, .4, Minutes of Economic Development. Councillor Kevin Savage, happy to propose. Thank you. Vice Chair, Councillor Alexander, happy to second. Thank you. Um, members all agreed? All agreed. 4.5, Minutes of Governance. Um, Councillor Mackle, happy to propose. Thank you. Vice Chair, Councillor Kyle Moutry, happy to second. Okay, thank you. Members all agreed? No lights on, thank you. Agenda item 4.6, performance and audit. Councillor, sorry, Alderman Greenfield, happy to propose. Thank you, Vice Chair, Councillor Hockey, happy to second. Thank you, members, all agreed? No lights on, okay. Agenda item five, the Chief Executive's report. Um, I'm going to hand over, this is a decision item, and I'm going to hand over to Kate to take us through this report. Thank you, Lord Mayor. This is an item four decision. The report is taken as read. Members will note from the report that on the 12th of March, DFC sent all councils draft regulations for remote hybrid meetings for comment. Members may recall that in 21-22, DFC carried out a call for evidence on remote hybrid meetings and DFC has informed us that the responses they received indicate a general support for permanent provision of remote meetings being made. The department has therefore asked the council to comment only on the draft regulations and not on the principle of remote hybrid meetings. Members, I've reviewed the draft regulations and they largely replicate the previous legislation for remote hybrid meetings. The only comment I would make to DFC on the draft regulations relates to uh, draft regulation 2.5, which states that provision for remote attendance applies notwithstanding any prohibition or 
other restriction contained in the standing orders or any other rules of the council governing the meeting and any such prohibition or restriction has no effect. I think that this may be a carryover from COVID when other legal restrictions on travel and gatherings were in place, which meant the public couldn't lawfully attend meetings in person. I think that this may be the case, especially as Regulation 2.6 of the draft regulations then goes on to state that it's effectively a decision for each individual council, whether they hold remote or hybrid meetings. So there's a bit of a tension between the two sub-regulations. Members have drafted a response to DFC on the draft regulations, which is attached at Appendix 3. Members are asked to approve, subject to any comments, proposed amendments or additions they may have, the draft letter attached at Appendix 3, and to authorise its submission to the Department for Communities. Thank you, members. Thank you, Kate and members. I know you have took every word in <laughs> intelligently. Any questions, members? Councillor Alexander. Happy to propose. Thank you, Councillor Alexander. Councillor O'Hanlon. Happy to second, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Kate will be relieved to know that that wasn't questions. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay. Um, members, schedule a correspondence. Three items for noting. Content to note and move on. Oh, 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 wait, we've light to let up. Councillor Lavery. Thank, uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. It's just a wee quick one, 6.1, you know, the current on Hill Road there. I know it's quite, uh, there's a lot of planning applications, I think, in there, a lot of residential development. I'm wondering, you know, they're proposing to do 40 mile an hour, but given the have a urban development that's going to go on there. Will a 30 mile an hour limit be more appropriate? I don't know if we could just send out as query to DFA. Maybe they'll give us a reference number in response, but it'd be good to just put it on there, put it on the radar and see see what they think. Thank you. Um, yes, absolutely. I was actually thinking the same lines, uh, Councillor Lavery, but I was actually waiting until maybe that building had been completed because then the, they only take it as it's built up but we can certainly send the letter in and then follow up with a second letter if that's if, that's, if you're content with that member or officers we do that okay councillor evans thank you lord Mayor. my um comment is on 6.1 as well along the same um lines as councillor lavery um i understand that we maybe should just wait until the development is completed, but I just wanted to make it a note that I would have concerns of it being 40 mile an hour, given that there is a play park and the playing fields there and a cemetery. And we do already have traffic lights on that road. So 40 mile an hour just seems a wee bit too much. Thank you. Um, the only thing I would say, Councillor Evans, is you've got a slightly difference of opinion there with Councillor Lavery or myself. Will we wait? Will we just send a letter in and then we can follow up with another letter whenever the building is completed? That what's what's your thoughts on that? I'll call you in again, Councillor Evans here. Yep, no, I'm happy to do that. Just send them a letter and just raise a few concerns, but I understand that we need to wait until it's completed until they can look at it again. Okay. That's great. Members, no other lights on, so we're content to move on to agenda items uh, seven. Um, members, can I, if, has anyone any queries on 7.1 right through to seven point, let me see where we are, 7.7, 7.6. Um, I don't see any lights on, so could I have a proposer and seconder for to propose and second on block? Thank you, Councillor McClelland, and thank you, Councillor Her, the second that. Um, members, could I have a proposer and seconder to go into committee? Please. Thank you, Councillor McElrath and Councillor Armstrong. ICT, could you let me know when the I.
members of AOB. So um, the first one is Councillor O'Hanlon. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I've, who I was going to take both of them together, if that, is that okay with you? And I'll keep them quick. Uh, first one, uh, Lord Mayor, is in relation to the dredging of the, the River Blackwater. Uh, Jonathan, I've uh, corresponded with you uh, in, in relation to it. Uh, and I know there's there's some discussions in Mid-Ulster Council as well at around um, who's responsible for what. And I'd be grateful maybe if a report could be brought back uh, in due course uh, around the roles and responsibilities and then hopefully a plan to, to have the, the River Blackwater uh, dredged. Um, second issue then is in relation to green bins. Um, for some of you who suffered listening to me about green and brown bins for uh, quite a while, um, when the, the bins were, the dreaded bison were dispatched with uh, and the green and brown bins were, were brought in, part of the, the process was to, uh, uh, where well, members were told that the, the green and brown bins would be rolled out to Laurel properties uh, across the area. And I've just gone back through emails today, even going back as far as 2021, uh, got written assurances from officers that they would be included uh, in groups uh, such as uh, um, churches, uh, sports groups and uh, schools. Uh, now, I know um, that there's some provision has been made for churches uh, and where a sports group is also a registered charity, uh, they can access the bins, but we do no such service for, for schools. And the irony is, we're going around and trying to encourage uh, children to get involved in recycling, but we can't even provide a single green bin uh, at the schools. Uh, and to me, that is something that we need to rectify. It's not that we're putting on extra lorries uh, to be able to facilitate it. This is very different to the black bin, which the, the schools pay for uh, through a commercial service. But this is for the green bin for recycling of plastics and papers. Uh, that isn't provided at schools. Uh, and I'm ask that a report is brought back through the appropriate committee about getting those arrangements put in place. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor O'Hanlon. And Jonathan, are you content to bring a report? I can't see you, but are you content to bring a report back on both of those to the relevant committee? Okay, thank you, Councillor O'Hanlon. Um, Councillor Kyle Moutry, you have also an item that you would like to raise? <laughs> Yes, uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, tonight, members, um, I wanted to raise a very valid uh, complaint that has been raised with me time and time again by local constituents in Portadown, and that is the condition of the football pitch at Tremilly Green in Corcoran and Reddenville. This green is owned and maintained by council, and within it is a small grass football pitch whereby children play throughout the spring and summer months. Last summer, I raised the issue of grass cutting on this pitch with ground maintenance within this council. For context, the grass is often left far too long, and on the rare occasion that it is cut, it is mulched, meaning lawn clippings are left behind, making the surface unplayable for children. Despite this, children still play on it throughout the summer months, and there would rarely be an occasion when you go and you do not see large groups of uh, children congregating here on Jermilly Green. Now, this particular estate is of considerable size, and within Kirkrain and Redmondville and the newer developments surrounding it, there is an estimated um, 1,400 homes in this area. Within this very estate, um, council removed four nets from the all-weather pitches a decade ago, and they have never been replaced. There is no mugger, and this is the only form of sports pitch in the area. I have spoken to officers in previous months about the scarcity of sports pitch, pitches across Portadown, and this has been well documented. In the summer of 2023, when I asked council to maintain this pitch and to remove the grass clippings to make it playable for children, I was told that it couldn't be done due to budgetary constraints. And yet, this is the very same council that has a seven-figure overtime bill at present. And I am told that we cannot muster the small nominal amount of money to, re to remove grass clippings from a football pitch that is played on both day and night throughout the summer months. To me, this is contradictory. This council boasts a corporate policy of encouraging young people to get outdoors, to stay fit and healthy. 
The Get Moving ABC partnership has a target set of this borough becoming the most physically um, active borough in Northern Ireland. And yet, just a few weeks ago, a video circulated on social media of a young boy mowing the grass with a lawn, a push lawnmower himself. Why? Because it has been long neglected by this council, and this is the expectation of the people who live in Corcoran and Redmondville. I do not see this as an unrealistic request, and I would simply ask that this is a matter that can be taken forward in the months ahead, and that we can explore a better way um, of delivering acceptable conditions for the young people in Corcoran and Redmondville. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Moutry. Uh, Jonathan, do you want to come in on that or would you, do you think we could organise a site meeting there or do you want to come in on that? Yeah. Yes, uh, thank you and thank you, uh, Councillor Moutry, for your uh, commentary there. So certainly I'll pick this up with the, the head of department and certainly we want to look at all of our pitches right across the borough in terms of the service level agreements that, that we have uh, in terms of the frequency of cotton and so on and so forth. So certainly, uh, if required, I'm happy to take a report or ask the head of department to bring a report back into the, uh, one of the next environmental services committee. Uh, members are agreed. Thank you. Content with that, Councillor Moutry? Yes. Okay, and the final item of AOB is with Alderman Wilson. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, this one just spoke to Jonathan earlier on, so I'll not labour too much on it, but it was just regarding some ongoing concerns sort of for the past year about the requirement for some um, trimming of overgrowth and that at Rich Hill Recreation Centre. And Jonathan has said that he will pursue it for me. And I suppose when he's at it, he could also link up with me on an issue of drainage out on the main road. I think there is some infrastructure within the recreation centre site that is de facto and it's leading to flooding up on the new line and road service are keen to get involved in order to try and sort of a dual approach, try and resolve the issue. So I can forward you on more detail on that as well. Maybe deal with both issues. It'd be great. Thank you. Jonathan, will I call you in on that one too? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, certainly on both issues. I will certainly uh, speak to uh, Alderman Wilson in relation to those in more detail, certainly. Okay, I appreciate that, Jonathan. Thank you. Uh, folks, that's the end of our meeting tonight. And uh, thank you for um, all um, your comments earlier. And I wish you all a safe journey home. Good night.